Today we're going to be testing out the world's gnarliest spear in the world. Well, good day everybody. Welcome to another survival fishing adventure. You guys are following the series, I thank you. And if you've been enjoying it, I thank you even more because your appreciation for the videos is definitely what keeps me fired up to make any more. So we're back at the junk pile because I have some unfinished business. If you've been watching the series, you know we've done some gorge hooks, we've done some primitive hooks, we've done a fish spear. Definitely they have left room for improvement, put it that way. So I've ran out of material. I have enough to do one little pokey bit thing here and one little hooky bit thing here. So my idea is to harvest a little bit more of this fencing here. There's barbed wire fencing and there's actual fencing. I find the fencing is probably going to work better for this project here. Uh, what I want to do, well I have two things in mind. I actually want to try to improve on the gorge hook theme. Last time we made them pretty short so I want to make them longer this time or varying lengths to find out what will work. I found a creek that has just a ton of rainbow trout which is going to work perfectly for my experiment and I want to actually make a spear that will work. Basically my idea is to have a pointy bit and a hooky bit and combine those two on a long stick So when I jab it, I actually hold on to the fish instead of losing them And I think by going with the metals I'll have a better chance than just using a stick wrapped in barbed wire So that's my plan. I'm gonna harvest some materials and we're gonna to get to work Well, I've got a good bunch of material here now. A big handful of that uh, fence wire. This is the fence wire, and then there's some thinner barbed wire. So the barbed wire I think I'm gonna use for the gorge hooks. And then the other ones I have an idea like I mentioned. But I'm finding the material is really actually easy to work. Rather than use the hacksaw or snippers or anything, it's pretty brittle. So if you actually bend it back on itself a couple times, it tends to break. So once, back, sometimes a third time in the same spot, the metal heats up, it's fragile enough, it breaks, but I think it's rigid enough to hold a sloppy fish. So that's our metals covered. Uh, there's nothing else from the junk pile that I want here now. So the only thing I need from the woods here is a nice big maple tree for my spear. So let's cut one down. I've been thinking a long time about how to make this. It's kept me up at night, just trying to figure out with the materials that I have here, what can I do with them? And what could you guys do in an apocalypse? You know, you could have basic tools around. The metals aren't gonna disappear in a hurry. They're gonna last a long time. So what can you do? What's effective? Not necessarily just primitive, because we're never going back to primitive. I mean, as fun as that is to play around with primitive stuff, it's very doubtful we end up going backwards. We'll always have the knowledge, mostly. I mean, there are, of course, exceptions to every rule here. But for the most part, we will have access to metals moving forward for a long time. At least it'll survive in your minds. And that's what matters. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about survival and apocalypse.
All right, dudes, we're all done. This thing's freaking gnarly. I sharpened all the points. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five extra one here. This one's a little short, bendy ones. So they're, I just kind of curled them around with the vice grips and they're sharpened to a point. And then on the middle, there's the typical frog gig kind of thing. Probably not what's gonna hold onto the fish. It's gonna be these grabby bits. So what I'm hoping is that these pierce the fish at the top and then these pierce the fish at the belly. And what I'm hoping is they're gonna be kind of flexible. So if I hit the fish in the wrong kind of spot, they're gonna kind of slightly bend out of the way. This is modeled after a Native American style uh, fish gig uh, grabber. It was propped open um, with a piece of wood, I think, and it had uh, jagged points. Now, I could try to make one of those, I just don't have the materials. And remember, this is apocalypse style, so we have metals. So I'm gonna go over to my favorite trout hole, which is, happens to be absolutely loaded with rainbow trout. And we're gonna try this in a real world situation and see if this will work. This would be really practical during a salmon run or something like that, but I got an even better spot. So let's zip over there and see if this thing works. Well, here we are, guys. We got the gnarliest freaking spear ever conceived in the history of mankind. Barbs coming out everywhere. I mean, do you seriously want to stick your hand in there? You think you'd ever get it free catching on all those barbs? There's a big misconception in the survival world that you can just sharpen up a stick and jam it into a fish and it works. You've seen it on all kinds of survival shows. You've even seen people throw spears and have them land into fish and then them just come and collect them. I don't think it works that way, at least not in my experience. Whether this works is left to be seen today in this video. Let's see if we can make this work. Got the perfect place. Got some landlocked trout. They can get up, but they can't get down. They're stuck here by a physical barrier. Perfect test place for this spear. Got it rigged up with a GoPro, so you're gonna get a first person's perspective. But first, we're gonna try our gorge hooks. Last time we tried our J hooks with some success, but not much success with the gorge hooks. And the gorge hooks are manufactured again out of sharpened barbed wire fencing which should persist through the apocalypse. So let's throw them out there and see what happens. Yeah, we're gonna forego the handline business today because I just wanna eliminate a lot of the variables. The handline can be done here. It's just a lot simpler with the rod. I, I wanna test the gorge hook, so forgive me. All right, we got a take right away. Got a fish fighting it. We want them to swallow that gorge hook and get it lodged in the throat. So we're gonna see if this thing freaking works or not. I know a fish has got it. And I know if I used a J hook, I'd have it by now. Whether, it's whether I can drag it in. No, it already popped off. Now there's just a bare gorge hook there. No, nope, it's actually a worm on it. There, one took it again. This is a big one now. So it might have a fighting chance of swallowing it. We're gonna give it a little bit more time than we would normally. You can see they're picking it up and spitting it out, picking it up and spinning it out. Big ones, small ones. They're not liking it that much, but they are tolerating it. There, one's got it. And one seems like it might be hooked there. Oh no, it came out, it spit it. So that's what that gorge hook looks now. It's looking all right. It's looking more gorgy now. We just got to get that thing to stick in there. So I was told after the last video to try different sizes of gorge hooks. This is a different size of gorge hook. It's bigger than the ones we used last time. And I could try bigger than that. I've got some bigger than that. If that doesn't work, we'll try a bigger one. There we go. We got one hooked up now. Wow, we actually got, oh, we actually had him hooked in there and it just slipped off. Like this looks on principle, it looks like, oh yeah, you just pull it and then it lodges itself in the throat. <laughs> it's like, okay, 
But in the real world, it doesn't quite go that way. You, you really got to wonder if people actually tested this stuff in real life. You ever seen people fish with barbless hooks and they always lose them? Like, they lose them easier. I mean, I'm losing them easier than a barbed fish. Look at that. They want to take it. Oh, there's a big one. Did it grab it? A small one grabbed it. I want a big one. There, that's a big one. That's a big one, but it's caught in the grass now. Oh, okay. We got a big one on. This one might... Oh, shoot. That was a big, big one. A big, big one. You can see what I'm going to be spearing into. I don't know if you guys can see because I got polarized glasses on, but I can see a whole mess of fish here. I mean, can you imagine spending your whole day trying to catch a fish? There, there's a small one. No, nope, came right out. Can you imagine spending your whole day trying to catch a fish? Only to, only to lose it? That big guy is not even interested. What about this guy over here? Will he take it? He's not interested. He's not hungry. It's almost like I'm fishing without a hook here. What do you guys think? I mean, that's a big, big gourd truck, but it's popping out. It's not wedging. So they're getting it in their mouth, getting the weight of it on there, but it's just popping out. There's nothing on there to bite. We're going to try a little bit of a different set up here with the gourd truck all the way through and it forming a T. We'll see if this works. I don't know. I mean, I would not, at this point in time, I would not trust my life to a gourd truck, put it that way. If you can bend the metal into a J, or you can make a gourd truck J hook, maybe. But like this, as a straight gorge, as I've seen Ray Mears do it, I mean, I have my doubts they work. Probably work on certain fish, not on others. Oh, oh, no, it came off. Well, let's put the J on here and see if we can actually catch one with the J, and I'm gonna recommend making metal J's. I mean, that's why they came up with metal J's, because they work better than a gorge hook. All right, now we got our, our J hook. This is our metal J that we made out of barbed wire. And it worked last time, so it should work this time too, right? Let's see if we can't catch ourselves a big one. There's a big one. Big one's got it. Let's set the hook on this guy. There we go, set the hook, first cast. We got our fish. He's gonna go in the weeds. It's a good fish and he's fighting it pretty good. I'm gonna keep him out. Oh yeah, that's holding on real nice. Real nice. Let's keep him out of the logs here. Good fight. Oh no, he's gonna get in the log. Oh, we got him out. Can you imagine trying to fight a fish on a gorge hook like this? I mean, look at the power these guys have. Oh, right into the log. Okay. Let's beach him. Hopefully we don't lose him right at the shore here. I don't know if I can lift him out of the water here. Let's beach him. We'll do it properly. We don't break our line. Okay. There we go. Yeah, we still got lots of power left. Yeah, we know. We know you got power. Here we go. All right, well, there's our fish. That was legitimately the first cast on that metal J hook. And that thing went down. Ooh, hang on, buddy. It went down nice and deep here. And it basically what it's doing is catching down in the, uh, in the gullet here. And all those little, we might have to put this fish out. We can't. These hooks are like almost, because they they go sideways, they almost better than a normal hook. And that's b completely barbless. There we go, guys. There's a nice looking trout on a barbless barbed wire hook made from scrap metal I found in the woods. These things freaking work. Gorge hooks do not work. It's as simple as that. Now we get to go on to the fun business which is trying to spear a trout with the gnarliest, rustiest spear built design ever made or ever conceived of. Let's get on with the fun. Oh, we're gonna try to keep this fish alive for as long as possible, only for the fact that it's super hot today. And I know if I leave him out of the water for any length of time alive, 
or dead, we're gonna get flies absolutely all over him. So you're gonna use just a little bit of our paracord here. Just put him in the water here. And we'll keep him alive. And then we can attach this to the grass here. It should be plenty. Maybe not. Maybe we won't chance it. We'll hook it around a tree here. This should work on a tree branch. There we go. That's enough. Just in the water. Keep them alive. I'm a touch concerned with this one. Keeps trying to roll over a little bit. These are all super kind of brittle. And then I have to get enough force to actually get a fish into the mill here. But they should kind of bend aside and then catch. Bend and then catch. Bend and then catch. And then if I get all the way down to the bottom, I should be good. Because it's going to want to bite into here and then not want to go out. The hardest part, I think, is going to be actually to get the fish out of this thing once it's in there. And the next question is whether I can wade out there or not. Because it's actually... It, it's uh, It looks solid, but it's actually a mud bottom. And because it's a mud bottom, I'm going to sink. Did you guys see that shadow go over here? That was actually an off spray flying over, so... Those fish were completely bothered by that Offspray There's actually a nice big fish Just over here What I might try to do is crawl in here Because the water is actually flowing downstream And then it won't muddy up the bottom over here And I can hide behind this little fish barrier here and pick my fish The goal really is going to be to sneak up on the fish. There's a lot of mud in here and I know once I get in there it's going to stir it up. It's not really going to work to my advantage, although the fish won't be able to see me as well. I won't be able to see them and I really want to pick my fish and get it right through without jamming it into the ground. So if I jam it into the ground, then I got to re-bend all my little bits here. So let's get this GoPro fired up. We got three cameras running again. The GoPro on my head. We got you guys the main camera. And we got the underwater camera. So we might want to try to get that GoPro in the water. Now those fish are completely stirred up. But they still seem to be swimming by, which is nice. And I got a nice long spear. Refraction is going to play a part in this as well. And most of those fish are completely vacated. This little hole here, there's a big one. I like that guy, but he's uh, too fast for me. The fish are kind of getting used to the spear a little bit. There's a small one. It really is tricky to see when I want that one. There's one. Oh, I'm, I hit it. What happened? I bent the spears out of the way. Shoot. Dang it. The spears, the, they didn't come back. I didn't get a good hook into it in order to get those keepers to work. They just kind of bent out of the way. Let's see if we can't get another one. Maybe we won't go after the big, big guy. That's a big, big guy. Here's another big, big guy I don't want. I want a medium-sized guy. Medium-sized guy, come on, where's a medium? Oh, I missed him. Oh, I bent the spear out of the way again. Shoot. Dang it. Oh, that went right into the dirt. Oh, we bent my spear back again. Oh, I had that guy. Shoot. Oh, I missed him. I missed him. <laughs> I got him. She's oh, oh, he's almost off. He's almost off. We got him. She's oh, he's almost off. He's almost off. Well, that freaking worked about time though. Uh, I thought I was gonna lose him. I got one in the belly here, and a couple here in the back. Just barely though. And there it is. There's a the result. So there we go. There's two fish for our efforts. I would definitely go with the J-hooks though. Put this guy out of his misery. So I'm glad we couldn't get a result out of it.
Got him. Got him. Got him. Phew. Got him. Well, shoot, we got him with just the other ones. We got him, though. Oh, there we go. Here's fish number two. Ah, it worked. I think we just got him by the bottom keepers, though. We didn't. These ones all bent out of the way. So, I mean, the thing works. It just doesn't work as I had planned. These, these extra ones are just extras. Oh, there's a belly one. The belly one actually hooked on there. So you gotta jam it in and then hope they fold up. So maybe these are just a little bit too long. Whew, it worked. Well, I got some action on the GoPro only. It actually, I had to take advantage of it. I had a fish swimming right, right close to me on the opposite side. So I didn't get the main camera on it. Uh, it was just out of edge. But uh, you'll see on the GoPro here, hopefully I got it in frame. But I got another one. This one I got um, straight through the back. I didn't quite grab onto the tines, but uh, it worked. I like how that bottom one is like a little bit of insurance though. No, it doesn't even want to come out at all. There we go. There we go. Nice big fish. Make for a good dinner. I'll oh, throw him up on the stringer. Oh, there we go. Well, it's just a little guy, but it works. Hey, it works. What can I say? More prongs. That's the answer. More prongs. Oh, I got that one and I killed it, but I didn't get him straight out. There we go. So the spear works. Got a big tree in there. So that guy, I got him and then he uh, flicked out, but I got him enough to kill him. Oh, so there we go, guys. What are we on, number three or four? This guy, I just glanced off, but I had enough to kill him, and then I just had to pick him up. So hey, this stuff works. That's a freaking big mess of fish, and that big mess of fish made a big mess of my spear. It's all mangled up now. Gonna have to go back to drawing boat on that one. I wanna thank my buddy, Matt LeClear, if you run a small business in the US and you want to grow your business and you don't want to add a ton of money to your overhead, but you want to grow your business at the same time, give my buddy Matt a ring. I'll put the link down in the description below. You can give him contact. Small business in the US, he's your man. He's going to help you out. Grow your business like I'm growing my knowledge of spearing fish in primitive, primitive ways.